And the countdown is on in five, four, three, two, one. And we're getting ready for Hard Gainer Solution 2.0 that I've uh, come up with working on the former Hard Gainer Solution. So just going to wait for people to get on board. And then I'm going to have at her, uh, bring people in. And I see I'm getting some... Uh, questions already so that's good and uh once uh, everyone gets on board i'm going to start uh, usually with a preamble while we wait for people and then um, we're going to get to her and then uh, we'll bring uh, andy in at the at the end with his own insights uh, i see him in the lobby there i'm not sure if he can hear me yet but uh just yeah thumbs up so we're good there so we got uh andy on board as well so uh, we're going to get into some Hard gainer solution uh, conversation, um, and uh, going to get right into that uh, momentarily. And uh, just a couple updates first. But I thought first, what I wanted to do. Um, people are gathering pretty quick, so uh, before I uh, introduce the PowerPoint, I'm glad to have everyone on board. Uh, seem to be coming in fast and furious, so that's great. By all means, hit your share button and uh, hit your emoticons, your likes and your love buttons and all that if anything I say resonates, and uh, if it doesn't, then uh, maybe next time. But I wanted to start with, uh, hey Perry, I'm gonna need you on this one. I wanted to start with um, a blog by uh, Seth, um, Seth Godin, uh, uh, sort of, um, he is to small business, I guess, what I would be to fitness knowledge. And uh, he has a blog. Um, and I thought it was pertinent because his blog represents a lot of what goes on in this industry. It speaks, even though he's talking about small business in general, it speaks to the fitness and diet industry in particular. And I just wanted to... Um, to read it to you and then uh, give you my preamble on Hard Gainer Solution 2.0 and then get into it. But this is important and it's a very short blog. It'll only take a minute or two. So I want to, uh, I'm going to read it uh, word for word. So this is from um, Seth Godin's blog and uh, basically here, here it goes. So he says, there is no market, but there are markets and markets have segments. There are people who enjoy buying expensive wine. There are people who will save up their money to have a big wedding. There are people who will pay to have a personal trainer. And within these segments, there are careful consumers, traditional consumers, consumers who seek out cutting edge. And then there are bargain hunters, luxury snobs, and people who measure the way Consumer Report does. Often overlooked, though, is the fact that in many markets, particularly involved in personal finance, small business, which fitness industry is, and relationships, there are people who are obsessed with the shortcut, what has been known online now as the hack. They want something that's too good to be true. They respond to big promises that offer magical, nearly instant results. They want a squeeze, squeeze page, a tripwire offer, a hard sell. They respond to these messages because they're a signal that a shortcut is an offer. My grandmother, who never exercised a day in her life, bought an exercise machine from a late night TV commercial. Uh, when it uh, sat gathering dust, she explained she thought it would do the exercise for her and she was disappointed that it didn't magically make her fit for $99. Or consider the victims of plastic surgeons to the stars who pay for radical surgery only to discover that it didn't change their social life at all. Or the hardworking people who fork over money to a get rich internet ICO based on technology that they and even the promoter don't even understand. There are complicated reasons for wanting this sort of engagement. It might be that the promise and the pressure of these pitches create endorphins that are pleasing to us. And it might be that deep down this market segment knows that things that are too good to be true and can't possibly work and that's fine with them because they don't actually want change. They simply want to be able to tell themselves that they tried, that the organization they paid their money to is what failed. Of course, it wasn't their own failure. Once you see that this shortcut market segment exists, you can choose to serve them or to ignore them, and you can be among them or refuse to buy in, but you do have to choose. And I thought, that's just wonderful. Let me read that final conclusion again. Once you see that this shortcut market segment exists, you can choose to serve them or to ignore them, and you can be among them or refuse to buy in, 
but you have to choose. And boy, did that ever hit me right in the center of the forehead because I'd been fighting with in this industry to try to be authentic and try to be real and try to deliver based on exercise science and research ever since I've been involved. And yet we all see online what happens, especially in fitness and diet industry, is the gimmick is the gimmick is the gimmick. And then with affiliate marketing, you have one gimmick being affiliated marketing by another gimmick and they become this little sort of in group in this tribe. And then before you know it, uh, this is what starts passing for knowledge. So I think Seth must be seeing that in his own uh, industry as well. And that blog is just brilliant. And it speaks, speaks to the people who want to believe in magic, who want to believe in the complication of the plan. And they think that change is an event and not a process. And that's, I thought, just really, really important stuff. So I thought I would bring that to you. And then uh, without further ado, I'm going to get to, so hopefully you guys found that interesting and you can uh, hit some uh, likes and shares and all that stuff. And maybe Perry, you can bring in the link uh, to Seth Godin's blog there, and then uh, we'll get that going as well. So wanted to talk about the hard gainer solution. And uh, just along that lines, I wanted a little, little update, little, little personal story, whatever you want to have it. Um, and I'm going to go through this and then I'm going to uh, bring Andy into the conversation at the end because uh, Andy, just make notes as I'm going along point to point since you haven't seen the PowerPoint. And then I'm sure you'll have lots to say. But um, basically, one of the things is uh, just this past week, Andy's parents were in visiting and uh, Andy and I were touring around the Okanagan, uh, the Okanagan with Andy's parents and Andy's folks. So we went out one day and it was uh, funny because I had chosen to wear a pair of shorts that uh, Ange had bought me for our trip to Aruba. I didn't think anything of it, made sure I looked uh, fashionable, made sure I looked as, you know, as good as I can get. And we went out and within an hour of getting out of the car, I realized I had made a huge mistake of not wearing a belt. And what had fit me just a couple months back in April, May, my pants were literally going to fall to my knees if I didn't hold them up everywhere we went. So now because I'm on the hard gainer solution 2.0, that has something to do with it. But I think it's more of the process of breaking vegan the longer you're on it. And here I am just like Andy and like most of my clients adding more volume to my meals all the time, eating more, but weighing less. And I couldn't believe it because I didn't even give much thought to it. I put these pants on and uh, most of the day I spent complaining how I, uh, I had to work with one hand because I had to hold my pants up uh, because they were literally just going to fall. If I stood up from this chair right now with those shorts on that fit me just in the end of April and May, they would fall to my knees without much help. So that was an interesting because I don't weigh myself and I don't spend time obsessing on those things. Uh, that was uh, definitely an interesting observation I thought I would share with you all. And it just so happens to coincide with the fact that Hard Gainer Solution 2.0. So you're going to learn a lot in this about uh, program design and how programs work um, and things like that. So the Hard Gainer Solution, for those of you who don't know, one of my most popular uh, books online. You can see it behind me there. Um, it's also an online course. And uh, if you check Amazon, there's over 100 reviews. Uh, most of them are, are pretty spectacular and positive. It's helped a ton of people. And I wanted to come back to it this year because we spent most of uh, last year, Andy and I, shooting the Hard Gainer um, uh, online course. So we went from the book and we shot all the exercises and uh, we started actually on Super Bowl Sunday, the year we started shooting and we didn't finish until the end of August, I believe it was, Andy can comment on that. And so this year I wanted to get out in the summer a little more uh, because I was also shooting the Busy Woman's Train at Home project at the same time. So I was only uh, getting out of the house on summer days on weekends and I wanted to change that this year. So went back to the hard gainer solution so I could get outside more because uh, doing whole body all the time gives you those options. And then, uh, you know, I wanted to go from there. So uh, just a little comment here. Oliver is just saying he's had to have uh, new trousers uh, as well. So, um, yep. Uh, welcome to the club. Uh, Oliver is a client of mine. And again, eating more, weighing less, pretty awesome. Um, so, 
Um, anyway, I went back to the Hard Gainer Solution, and here's the Hard Gainer Solution course, and that's uh, Trevor Timmons there with the big guns uh, on your left, and uh, Trevor is now the assistant GM of the Montreal Canadiens um, hockey team, so very, very busy guy, and of course, you can see the, that that is... Uh, that's uh, Bob's owner, Andy, there, uh, handsome Bob, and then uh, yours truly down below. So this, while we were shooting the course, we did uh, that workout with Trevor in real time, actually. So uh, that was pretty um, pretty interesting as well. So I wanted to go back to it, but I wanted to make um, – Going back to it after two years, I had gone to body part training programs, uh, physique after 50. I went and I tweaked that as well. And then I wanted to go back to hard gainer. It had been about two years since I'd done it myself, which is really good to sort of go back into something and, and make it it's new again, but it's something you're familiar with. And I wondered what it was going to offer me in terms of tweakology. So one of the changes, and here are the changes I made that I will explain to you, and then we'll go through them. One of the things I made is I was more uh, particular about the on and off day. So what I found um, that cycles the best, two days on, one day off. Uh, my own approach to that is on those off days, that's where I go for my long walks outside uh, to keep my promise to get outside more in the summer. So uh, on my off days, both my off days, um, I'd go for my long walks on the Okanagan. The only time I take a true off day is if the weather doesn't cooperate uh, because I'm a bit of a diva and I won't get wet. So um, I do that. And that was sort of um, in the back of my mind and biplexes only. So taking from the original HGS and then putting in, instead of triplexes, reducing everything to biplexes and making sure more specific about the large body parts, five sets for each exercise for large, large body parts, four sets for biceps, four sets for triceps, and active recovery options for other people. This is actually something that was informed by my own clients. They would write in and, hey, Scott, I'm on Hard Gainer Solution. I'm doing three days a week. I'd really like to do abs by Andy on my off day. Is that okay? How? What changes would I make? Things like that. We're gonna talk about that. So the active recovery in two days on, one day off, in those off days, you could do active recovery workouts, and I'll explain uh, how to insert those if someone is uh, so inclined or interested. The other thing I established was a rotation of the first exercise each workout. And what I mean by that is that I started with uh, a more purposeful sequence so that day one, I always start with chest. Day two, always start with back. Day three, always start with shoulders. Day four, uh, always start with legs. And those are the large body parts that require more sets. And then I would just cycle through them, whether it's an off day or not. You just keep cycling through them. And then you add the arms in anywhere in particular in the biplex rotation. So I made that more specific, the rotation of the first exercise, reducing the whole workout to biplexes. So stretching it out just a wee bit longer. And then taking the rep scheme and making those sets of five that are on Hard Gainer Solution only on the first exercise and then everything uh, is actually way above that, usually shooting for above 10 reps on the rest of the body parts. And I actually switched to six reps myself, my own personal approach um, to that first exercise. So now low reps heavy weight in the Hard Gainer Solution 2.0 is six reps instead of five reps, and it's only on that first exercise. So those are some of the uh, um, changeology, tweakology changes that I made going through it, and I made some mistakes. I tried to do the two days on, one day off, and I had it in my head that first day is I could do two exercises per body part, and then the second day just do one. Uh, that quickly blew up in my face, and I realized that that wasn't sustainable and it wasn't good uh, for, for the body as well. So learn by doing. That's the only thing. It can look good on paper, but until you apply it, uh, you don't know how it's going to work. And then active recovery options, options for rest days. As I said myself, what I'm doing is I'm going out there and I'm just doing my long walks out in, in the Okanagan Valley uh, to enjoy the, the summer and see the wildlife and get around and all those things. But I did have clients who gave me the notion they wrote me and said, hard gainer solution. I love the program. I don't want to quit the program, but 
Uh, I'd like to do some more accentuated uh, ab work. I've got abs by Andy. Could I do that on an off day? And that got me thinking as well. What if we had active recovery options where you could do different workouts that don't affect the actual recovery of the hard gainer solution program, but it's not a rest day either. And that can fall into some pretty cool stuff. For instance, I had a military guy write me like a Navy SEAL or something. And um, he is, um, I forget the word for it, but he's um, in placement um, for, he's in a very dangerous uh, line of military telling me he loves the hard gainer, he's on the hard gainer, but when he gets um, placed, he's there for 26, 27 days. Is there something he could do in between? So I developed him uh, a circuit training protocol that just uses his duffel, his weight duffel that he carries with him, um, his military duffel that he carries with him. We use that as resistance and develop something he could do there. And then whenever he's around a real gym, he opts for the hard gainer solution. So one of the things we're getting across from the get-go is just how versatile the hard gainer solution program actually is, um, for instance. And then I got the idea, again, through a client, a client, while I'm doing your hard gainer solution, I like it, but I'd really like to focus more on my booty. Um, you know, what can we do there? So the great, the great glutes at home program, metabolic circuits uh, featuring Krista. Uh, what I did there is I had um, the lady do two days on hard gainer solution, first day off uh, the great glutes at home circuits, and then um, next two days, hard gainer solution, and then an actual full day off. So I was starting to realize there is many ways to utilize the hard gainer solution that still stays true to its operating principles, which I'll get to at the end. So that was really, really important as well. Now I'm seeing ways to use the program in a way that, that it can integrate other forms of training without violating uh, the rules and the principles the program's based on. And that's really important stuff because most programs couldn't allow and wouldn't allow for that. So that's really important stuff. And I even had one lady, now this is a little trickier, but she's doing my busy woman's uh, train at home uh, protocol and doing the hard gainer solution when she has access to a gym. There's a little bit of overlap there because you don't want to, uh, you got to watch when you're training body part training as the busy woman's train at home program does have body part exercises in it. So with a little bit of instruction, we're able to work around that. But that's three other of my programs right there that we were able to utilize within the hard gainer solution program where a person's like, three or four days in a row, the hard gainer solution is too much for me, but I don't really want to rest on those days either. But I just, I don't feel like my muscles are recovering on that third and fourth day. What can we do? Well, like I said, you know, well, one option was we opted for uh, Andy's awesome abs. Other people were doing cardio like myself. Some were doing yoga. Uh, a few women were just loving the, the ability to go in and do uh, um, the great glutes uh, at home metabolic circuits. So we started incorporating a lot of options. Now, this is what we call tweakology. And tweakology is something that I explain in my program design masterclass, wherein something is working. And I use the expression, you don't take an ax where you in a in a situation where a scalpel is called for. And a lot of people in the fitness and diet industry, they don't understand subtleties. They don't understand nuance. They don't understand tweakology. That's sometime just a little tweak here and there is something that that benefits what you're already doing. You don't blow the whole thing up uh, just because um, you want to make something better. You work on what's already working and you apply tweakology. And that's what Hard Gainer Solution 2.0 is about. Went into the original, the original is still good, but with my purposes and my needs and what I had in mind and listening to the dozens and dozens of people that have written me in the last couple of years about the hard gainer, uh, because it's such a popular program, just go on Amazon and look at the reviews. Uh, some of the, some of the one star reviews will make you laugh. But um, yeah, if you look at that, then this is an exercise in tweakology. So these changes that I made, switching to hard off days rather than train three, four, five, or six days in a row, having hard defined off days, going from utilizing uh, triplexes and biplexes to just biplexes, doing five sets 
of exercises for the large body parts using recovery, active recovery workout options on off days, rotating the first exercise in a sequential format, and then uh, going five reps only on that first exercise and surfing the curve on the rest. So what would that look like? Well, here's an example that I just pulled off, uh, you know, pulled out of my slacks, if you will. So the first exercise, again, um, hard gainer solution is whole body workouts for people that don't know. So uh, here's an example. Seated dumbbell shoulder press. We're doing five or six total sets. The reason I say five or six, first exercise of every day, depending on how how much weight you can lift, how strong you are, might require an extra warm-up or two. Uh, for me, I'm not as strong anymore, but I require an extra warm-up set or two simply because of the arthritis I have uh, in my shoulders. I can't just jump in and, and get after it. So we biplex into that first exercise, uh, GPP for the lower body, um, and we do that between sets of the shoulder press. That helps us uh, maintain metabolic activation uh, as we get going because the last thing you want to do is begin a workout, do a set, sit on your ass, um, and then not capitalize on any kind of metabolic momentum. That's fine if you're a power lifter shooting for a specific goal, but for overall metabolic effects and complementary metabolic effects to a body part program, you want to be uh, moving after the first exercise in between sets. So what makes sense is if you're doing a, your first exercise is an upper body one, like here, seated dumbbell shoulder press, you're going to do your GPP for lower body between those sets. And then you're going to take your time with that. And again, if you were starting with, uh, say, a leg exercise, then you would GPP your upper body between sets there. So that makes perfect sense. And then in the second biplex, what you see here, dumbbell squats for five sets. Again, five sets for the large body parts. Uh, seated dumbbell flies. Uh, so that's a fly machine, obviously. Notice the rep schemes now are all above, all above 10, 10 or above. That is different from the original hard gainer solution. And then in the next biplex, we see one arm reverse grip pull downs for five sets. And we see one arm reverse grip tricep push downs for four sets, 12 to 15 reps. And then you see that that's biplex together. And then finishing with the bicep, one arm hammer, hammer curls, 12 to 15 each arm. And any sit up crunch or leg raise variation is what's in the original hard gainer solution. I put that in blue. I myself, I take those out. I don't do any core work or things anymore. I can't aggravate my lower back, but I do a lot of uh, rotator cuff stuff in there. So I do external rotation one day, internal rotation the other day. But for people doing active recovery workouts, for instance, the one client, well, if I'm doing abs by Andy on my off day, do I still do my, my ab workout on the hard gainer solution day? And the answer to that is no. So that's the reason this is in blue right here. What you would do, you see me highlighting that. What you would do there is maybe he would take out the abs and put in calves. If it was a female, maybe she takes out uh, the abs and she's doing abs by Andy on the off day. Maybe she puts in a glute exercise, like a bird dog hold, or maybe um, you know she does something like a, a um, dog on hydrant or any of the glute exercises, a glute machine, that kind of thing. So right there, if you're going to do a different kind of protocol on an active recovery day, then you alternate, you take something out. Uh, if you're going to add something in, that's going to affect that on the next recovery day. So that's one option there. So for right there, that's why I put that in blue because uh, we take that out if someone on their off day is going to do uh, the abs by Andy circuits, then why do it on the hard gainer training day? So we remove that. We put in a, a calf exercises or we put in glute exercises, uh, anything like that. You could put in some mobility work, uh, you know, whatever is uh, not going to be affected Um on the active recovery day. So that's a good example right there. I thought I'd put in an actual, there's a free workout for people as well. That's true to the hard gainer, but it's also true to the hard gainer solution 2.0 in that it's all, all composed of biplexes. The lowest reps you do is six and that's only on the first exercise. Then everything is above 10 reps and everything is in biplexes uh, and it stays true to the actual, um, Principles. So the approach to rest days then 
is two days on, one day off, if possible. If you can swing that, then then that's the format you want to do. That'll mean training on weekends sometimes, but it does vary your uh, off days, which is kind of fun when you're not used to that. And here's the way I would suggest uh, approaching it. If you're going to go two days on, one day off, then I would say the first day, so in other words, that day three, that would be your active recovery workout. And you can do any workout that does not effect or negatively impact body part training or recovery. The examples, abs by Andy, great glutes at home, yoga, uh, that kind of thing. And then the second um, day off, two days on, one day off. So then you go back two days, hard gainer solution. And then the next one will be complete rest unless you're doing something like myself, which is just, you know, going for long power walks, which has uh, really no effect on recovery at all, as long as you're not pushing it. So I, I don't take any of those days off, but that's because the nature of that workout is cardio oriented, not muscular skeletal oriented. So I can do that. So the approach I would take for anybody else, if you're going to do a workout, um, active recovery workout, then two days on one day off that third day would be your active recovery workout, and then two days of hard gainer, and then that next day would actually be an actual off day. So in terms of tweakology, the hard gainer solution 2.0 still stays true to the constants, the principles that that program was built on. What are the constants? Well, this is where we get into program design masterclass again. The hard gainer 2.0 still is true to its program design principles. So it's still a whole body peripheral heart action based protocol, peripheral heart action based protocol. And it still focuses on inter and intra workout recovery, but it gets more structured in terms of the inter workout recovery by going to a more structured structured format of two days on and one day off. You could even probably do one day on and one day off. Uh, it's still a reps-based program, not an exercise-based program. So that's important. That's the nature of the program design of the hard gainer solution. That isn't the nature of all exercise program designs. So still no training to failure as in the original hard gainer solution program. If you're going to train whole body frequently, then you don't want to train to failure because then you're not going to get into workout recovery that's adequate enough to sustain it over the long term. So again, you learn more about these principles in terms of structuring programs around exercises or around rep schemes or around surfing the curve or around uh, the human movement model and push pull and all that kind of stuff. Um, then, then you're gonna learn that at program design masterclass and you can structure programs around the specific constants, but you can't do it across the board. You can't make uh, one size fits all according to the principles of exercise physiology. That's going to um, assume every little thing, every little detail. Like I said, there's a human movement model mm -hmm. that has push, pull, lower body, uh, you know, changes uh, in, in uh, levels and things like that. So um, all those things activating uh, different muscle systems like the anterior oblique system, the posterior oblique system, uh, the deep longitudinal system and the lateral system. Uh, you can structure programs specifically around those elements as well. And I talk about those. So that's uh, hard gainer 2.0, uh, what I've gone in and done to it. And again, what we see here is we take a scalpel, not an ax. We don't blow up the whole thing. It's got so many positive reviews on Amazon. It's already doing good. So you don't start again from zero. You make it a little better where it's possible to do so. Uh, and that's what we did. So uh, very, very important there. And I just wanted to uh, bring that in reality. So here's the change tweaks, two days on, one day off. So we're, we're more hardened about the off day. Biplexes only instead of using biplexes and triplexes. We're hard about five sets for each exercise for the large body part. We have active, re active recovery workout day options or you can just take them off depending on where someone's conditioning and work capacity is certainly at. Ro rotating the first exercise on a workout to workout, more formal, chest, back, shoulder, legs, chest, back, shoulder, legs, and the low reps only on the first exercise. And again, some of the options uh, for active recovery workouts are Andy's awesome abs and uh, great glutes at home 
and uh, the busy woman's protocol. And like I said, yoga, cardio, a lot of people this time of year, they go on hiking treks. So on their day off from hard gainer, they can go and they can, they can do hill climbing and they can do all those things. So uh, again, an exercise in tweakology that should make good sense. Hopefully that does make good sense and uh, you all understand uh, what I'm talking about there. So uh, hopefully you get that. And uh, yeah, with that, I'm going to put that back into the lobby and I'm going to uh, check out your comments and bring Andy on board. And uh, hopefully uh, you're all there. So, hey, JP, haven't seen you in a while. And uh, Matt, good to see you too. Um, that doesn't look like a mat. Your avatar doesn't look like a mat. Uh, so uh, glad to see you on board. And um, yeah, so I mean, and even um, I mean, even John Paul can, you know, uh, could do the hard gainer. And then on his off day, he could do his uh, mountain climbing there uh, in the Scottish uh, Highlands. So very, very important. And then, um, you know, the hard gainer solution, Perry's just saying, how can people get the program? Well, the program, you, I just gave it to you in terms of structure. I'm not going to go in and, and write out 80 workouts or anything like that for 2.0. But at the same time, um, you know, people really should learn how these things are structured. So, uh, you know, I suggest people do program design masterclass, um, you know, if they really want to understand about program design. And here's the thing, if you're a personal trainer and you want an edge, you need to have people on programs and not workouts. The stuff I see passing for personal training in a gym boggles my mind. And even worse is the stuff I see going on in group classes that make no sense. Exercises that aren't compatible being done back to back and, and they have no structure to them, no design sequence to them in terms of what you're doing today should be based upon what you did yesterday and what you're going to be doing tomorrow. That's a basic sequence of program design. I mean, that's like, kindergarten learn the letter a and alphabet kind of stuff and it's just being abandoned for you know magic exercise it's kind of like trying to learn cal calligraphy before you've learned how to print the letter a in in small case and large case so um yeah so uh, with that andy i left you to the end there but you must have some comment because you yourself uh have gone back to hard gainer solution too right yeah, yeah, I'm back on it. Yeah, I've uh, I've done it many times over the past uh, three years or so. You know, on and off. Um, I've done uh, physique after 52, and recently uh, I just you know, obviously the, uh, the the versatility of it. I love it for the summertime. Um, you know, it's and especially with my parents just visiting, um, you can really be. It's it's just so so intuitive, right? Like you can. You can go three three days a week. You can go every day if you want. So obviously, when they're visiting, you know, you have a lot more freedom there. You're not going to miss a chest day or miss a back day. You can go out and you know and enjoy the Okanagan with them, and, and not have to think about uh, you know, oh, I got to go get legs in or something. You know, it's 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 a it's a wonderful yeah, program. It, it's a good point for like uh, people came here and you needed to be flexible, but it also is like when we travel and need to be flexible. So yeah, it's one of those absolutely. things. Like I went back to hard gainer when I went to Aruba because I, I didn't know what days I would train and what days I, I wasn't going to train. Yeah. I didn't want to be hard and fast on, oh, I'm going to miss chest day. Oh, I'm going to miss back day. Oh, I'm going to, you know, all these things. You go to hard gainer, you're not missing a day of anything because, you know, it yeah. gets its attention. And then, you know, if you took two days off then you can go, a little higher intensity on that first day back because you've had extra rest and and it's just amenable to uh, interruptions in day-to-day -day life so people can oh, be yes. in the middle of a program and, and go to travel and go to hard gainer solution for three or four weeks and then go back to their program uh, when they return so it's the versatility of the design of that program is something i'm really really proud of so um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I see my parents maybe once a year, sometimes not even. So I'm, I'm not going to, you know, sorry, guys, we can't, you know, we can't go somewhere today. I have to go to the gym. You know, I wasn't, I, I don't have any have to's in life. So, uh, the, you know, the, the hard gain are really, you know, it, it's like the program of, of, of no program, right? Like it's, it fits in with that whole Zen lifestyle. I mean, it's a program, but there's just so many ways you can tweak it. And it's, I mean, it's, it's yeah, a beautiful it's, thing. It's funny because uh, about a month ago, I think I was telling you there was some, I don't know how it came to my inbox because I've been out of the competition world forever. And 
but this big announcement came about such and such a, a you know a competition was coming up and they had all these like um, guest speakers that were speaking and one of them was a real famous trainer and it was all about um, how whole body training is the new thing I'm like new thing like what do you read my book two years ago like you just <laughs> you know and so I had to smile like everyone right. sort of like a, you know two laps behind what you and I are doing it's just you and I have had yeah. this discussion not to get too far off track but we've had this discussion on how you know we're ahead of the wave that's coming on veganism because um, yeah. eating meat is not globally sustainable and i mean no. we don't we're not going to get into that conversation right now but we're ahead of a wave that's inevitable and it's the same thing and we're getting criticized for it and it was the same thing with m many things i've done over the course of my career that you know being ahead of the wave that comes no one ever who was criticizing me ever comes on board later and says i guess you were right and i was wrong you know so it's just funny let me get a comment in here from uh, mark's just saying Already love this hard gainer solution is great and love these tweaks. What types of things do you notice uh, feel to start adjusting in subtle ways? That's a great question, Mark. Um, well, for me, uh, and I'll let Andy comment because Andy can comment on what he did personally. What I do personally, Mark, has a lot to do with um, how more, how much more pronounced my limitations are getting. So the osteoarthritis in my shoulders is is you know, it's progressing rapidly. I can no longer lock out a weight. So if I'm doing shoulder press, even with a machine, I can't lock out at the top anymore. My shoulders just won't do that. Uh, it's the same with lowering dumbbells. Can't do that either. So I tweak around that as best as possible, but that's something that I can't apply to everyone else. So I have to be careful with that in terms of a program design tweak, because what I have to do isn't what everyone else should do or should alter. For instance, me taking out uh, any sit-up, leg raise, or ab uh, variation and doing rotator cuff instead, that's something that personal to me, so I don't put it in the actual program. And then I notice um, in lines with your question, what a great question that is. Um, in lines with that question mark, question mark, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, so, um, the other things I notice and track and feel is just how that extra off day can really like the cycling the off days in a, you know, um, a more regimented fashion than the original HDS, but one that's a little more frequent. Uh, you definitely and cycling that first exercise, you definitely get uh, that feeling of recovery. The muscles are not really in jeopardy of becoming flat, depending on where someone is at within their own work capacity. What about you, Andy? What changes have you tweaked uh, or made? Me personally, like I, I've done the hard gainer as written many times over, um, you know, just with, with small tweaks here and there. Right now, I developed a six day rep cycling scheme. Um, I won't go too, too in, uh, in the detail on that, just because I don't want to, I don't want to give away all my secrets, but um, it basically day one, you do, uh, uh, legs for five reps. Day two is back for fives. Uh, that, that's always the, the first exercise just on its own. And then I'll do two triplexes. Um, uh, day three is chest for fives. Day four is arms for fives. And day five is shoulders for fives. And day six has no fives. Uh, it, it's just a cycling of reps within that. And all, all the other exercises have a, a rep cycling that I, that I cycle through for the six days. I won't get into that, but um, yeah, the first exercise on those first five days is always uh, five sets of five with the exception of arms, which is only four sets, which is a biplex in itself, just because I, I'm trying to yeah, well, biceps and triceps together. But now my, sounds, my, sorry, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, I'm just saying my bad there that, you know, um, if we had more time, I would have got you to scribble that down. I would have made it in one of the PowerPoint slides rather than just the one that I presented that people could see. But folks, we were, Andy and I were swamped last week with uh, being out and about <laughs> in the Okanagan, being tour guides to some lovely people. Uh, I mean, which, I mean, we have no problem with. So, uh, but if we had more time, I would have got Andy to just scribble down an example and we would have put that up there. So maybe in the future, uh, uh, we can yeah, do that I as can well. So, uh, show you yeah. an example a week or something. Yeah. And here's another comment. Perry's just saying he travels 250 days a year. That sounds like Trevor. And Hard Gainer Solution is flexible enough for a decent uh, hotel gym workout. Absolutely. 
one of the things I'll do when I'm traveling is uh, sometimes I'll never know what kind of gym I'm going to get. Am I going to get it? Like, like I said, I went to Aruba this year, fully intending on going back to that hardcore place I did last year and it was a complete dump and I couldn't go in there twice. So if I, you know, I had to make the hotel work, uh, room work, you can definitely do that. So a hard gainer solution, the versatility in it, um, you can't find in many other programs. You just can't. So, uh, and then um, John Paul uh, just saying, uh, hard gainer is a plan that supports a lifestyle and is a huge benefit in terms of adaptability to fit the client. That's another thing as well. So, you know, thinking of client application and things like that, you know, I was reading through some of the reviews and some of the people who were poo-pooing on the hard gainer solution, um, you know, um, they weren't getting it. Like, well, while telling people they can train five or six days a week is ridiculous doing the whole, you know, they weren't, they obviously either didn't read the book or didn't understand the nuance in terms of the way it was explained about not training failure and stuff. And what John Paul is saying here is you have a client and you assess their work capacity, then you assign them two, three, four days a week, whatever that may be. Or like I, the reason I did 2.0, you assign them, okay, you've got enough, uh, work capacity to do two or three days of hard gainer, uh, but you have more uh, recovery capacity than you need. So let's put in abs by Andy on a recovery day, or let's put in an hour of yoga on a recovery day, uh, that kind of thing. So, you know, that's a, that's, you know, important stuff. So that's a good point. Uh, John Paul, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, Steven, don't forget Bill Pearl. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but <laughs> maybe you can, uh, oh, that he was doing whole body workouts. Maybe, maybe that's what you mean. Yeah. Bill was always the, uh, you know, Bill has, uh, set the trend for many a generation to follow the sad part. This day and age is that if you ask any 20 somethings who think they're into fitness culture and bodybuilding, they won't even know who Bill is, which is, uh, a sad statement so um but you can uh, let me know what what you meant by that Stephen. and then perry's just saying when a true genius appears in the world you may know him by this sign that the dunces are all in <laughs> confederacy against him well that reminds me of uh some uh well so a lot of client a lot of comments we've been getting lately on going vegan um so uh, but like like i said andy and i at this point in the research um vegetarianism at 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 the minimum and vegan most likely is the wave to come because it's inevitable because of uh, worlds that are becoming uh, uh, cultures that are becoming online and, and globalized and westernized. Uh, it's just not sustainable and we're not going to get into that now because most people aren't uh, into that. But uh, here's a good one from Alejandro. Would, would substituting each exercise with a body weight variation uh, be considered active recovery um, or a full HGS workout? Interesting question. Interesting question. One of the things I was going to put into an example of an active recovery workout was one of the workouts I made. I have a TRX whole body workout that uses the TRX, chest, back, shoulders, arms. Um, but I, then I didn't want to confuse people because I was mentioning in the 2.0 approach that you don't want anything that alters recovery for body part training. So that would depend, Alejandro, on actual assessment. So where is someone at? If they can handle an extra day of body part training, uh, then by all means you could do that. Or you could put in some kind of metabolic crank uh, at the end of a workout. Comment on that, bud? Yeah, I, I, I still get people all the time, you know, that they can't believe, you know, they're they're always like, you know, you train your whole body every workout or, or they've been watching me work out and say, you know, I, I've noticed that, you know, I see you doing a little bit of everything every every time I see you train, right? And and that's just because they don't understand the structure of it. They don't think that you can train your body every every workout. It's not like I'm going in and you know trying to train myself into the ground every workout. It's it's just you know stimulation. It's it's complete biofeedback, right? Like you're you're never pushing yourself so far in the training that that you can't come back the next day and, and do it all over again. Right. So, yeah. And again, people don't even recognize what they're actually seeing if they don't have yeah. a sound grasp of the principles. Right. It's like, Absolutely. it's like asking us where we get our protein from now. It's the same thing on the gym yeah. floor. Well, you know, how can you recover between workouts? Well, mm -hmm. understand exercise physiology and not training to failure and understand intra and inter workout recovery. And, and you can't explain that on a, Mm -hmm. Too many people want and expect answers within 140 characters on Twitter 
or a paragraph on Facebook or during commentary between while you're resting in the gym between sets and they're not willing to do the homework and they end up where they end yeah. up. Yeah, it's all and some of the personal trainers I see too, um, their, their clients are putting their, their trust in, in the trainer that, you know, they, they think that the trainer knows what they're talking about, but really they have no idea. They, they probably don't know any more than the clients and the clients putting all the trust in them. That's the frustrating part for me because they're yeah. here. They are thinking that they're an expert and they're, they're giving them something that's of no benefit to anyone. Yeah, and they're just uh, warm bodies taking money. Yeah. So, um, and then Lydia's just saying, I just brought the, uh, bought the program last year for my 14-year-old nephew, knowing full well I'd also use it. I missed the beginning of this live, so I'm going to have to rewatch and then apply the new tweaks. Uh, that's all good. We don't mind that, Lydia, especially from our regulars. So, uh, And then Brian's just saying, uh, as a way to help explain Hard Gainer Solution, when would you recommend a client to do something other than Hard Gainer Solution? When would Hard Gainer Solution not be as good an option as some other program? Good question. Um, if you're assessing someone in an ongoing way, like Brian, you're I, you're obviously a client of mine. Most people don't know that. So I get to do ongoing evaluations and assessments with someone so I can see when the program has reached full adoptability. Um, but the hard gainer is meant to be long-term sustainable. So I did it for myself for about two years before I moved on to something else. Uh, like Andy said, he's gone back and forth with it. Uh, a lot of people do nothing but um, full body training. So um, that's so that's very important. But it, it has to do with assessment. It doesn't have to do with, oh, I'm bored now. You know, uh, it's time to do, you know, um, it's time to do something else. No, it has to do with reading the biofeedback. And uh, that's really, really important as well. That's a great question, Brian. I could Probably, and actually, the answer to that, Brian, is actually in my program design masterclass, explaining durations of protocol, how long they should last, why they should last that way, but making and compensating for the fact of the actual individual's biofeedback as they go along. So some programs may be shorter, last not as long as you expected, and some programs will last a lot longer than expected when the feedback is authentic. So uh, Maria is just saying, uh, it's always a learning experience and always aha moments tuning in or reading your stuff, coach. Always glad to hear that, Maria. Uh, on that note, I was hoping uh, to remind people, I'm gonna go live again. I gotta make up for not being here last week. So I have lots of podcast content coming up because I'm gonna be away as well in a few weeks. And so this Friday, I'm going to do a webinar that I hope you'll attend because in the first few PowerPoint slides, I want your input. I'm going to actually pose questions uh, and ask you guys to comment so I can read the comments in real time, which will affect uh, the rest of the lecture. And I think you'll all be fascinated about uh, what we're going to end up talking about. So if you can tune in Friday, look for my announcement on that, probably around 1130 my time, uh, then that would be uh, awesome. So buddy, uh, you're, are you planning on going heading off the hard gainer solution soon? You're going to stick. I, I'm sticking with it until um, the beginning of August. Uh, that's when my next trip is. And then when I come back from that, I'm going to segue into a six day protocol that I'm going to uh, be testing out. Um, I don't know. Uh, what are your plans in, in regards yeah, to, or, or is it open-ended? Are you just not, you know, you'll decide when you decide. Basically. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be on it for the uh, foreseeable future for sure. Um, you know, I've, I've been loving it. Um, I keep going back to it because I love it so much. Uh, it just fits in with real life. Um, and I, I'm beyond the point where I need to be doing uh, strictly body part training, like body part specific training all the time, or, you know, I, I have a chest day or I have a back day. I mean, that's, that, that's very viable for a lot of people, but just, uh, you know, at, at my point in, in development, it, it you know, it, makes more sense to do uh you know whole body training just stimulate 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 is that i've done so many programs where you know i can only you know blast uh an individual body part so much at once now right like my workload capacity has adapted so much that i just i found that uh, i get more benefit out of whole body training than i do 
out of you know body part training, right? So, and I think a lot of people are surprised by that. Uh, I, you know, just in skimming some of the reviews on Amazon, that was sort of the overall. Mm-hmm. That was sort of the overall takeaway. It was like, holy crap, I'm making better gains now than like, you know, who would have thought kind of thing. So, I still like body part training programs myself. I like to do them more in, uh, you know. Um, well, what I call off season is when football season starts because I'm home more, and you know, just it just makes it easier in the winter to just have something a little more regimented since I'm more regimented with my time. But in the summer and stuff, uh, you know, I, and it was just fun for me to go back to hard gainer. It had been so long, went back to it, and went oh okay, but I can tweak it this way, I can tweak it that way. You know, I'm a little different this way. Um, question from Marson, but I'm not going to answer that Marson because it's so too unrelated to what we're talking about. We can get to that another time when we readdress the cycle diet. Uh, hopefully that's okay. If I start answering that now, we'll be another half an hour. So uh, cycle diet stuff is a little bit separate. So um, anyway, uh, Monica's just saying she's on workout 37 of the hard gainer as we speak. So um, yeah, so that sounds good. And then Ollie, always a comic. Let me add it. Let me add it. So yeah, hopefully uh, you guys will uh, be attending on Friday. Um, so that was uh, Hard Gainer Solution 2.0. Parting words, Andy? Uh, yeah, if, if, if you don't have it, pick it up. Go to Amazon or get the online course because it's it's a beauty. It fits in with real life, and you can use it anytime, even if you're on more of a, of a traditional program and, and you're traveling. You can use the HGS while, j- just while you're traveling, right? And then when you come home, you can go back to, to the program you're already doing. So, I mean, it's, it's so versatile. And I'll show you one more time, folks. I'm just going to put Andy back in the lobby there. And I'm going to show you uh, uh, one more time the actual – let me hide uh, all these posts here. Um, and I'm just going to show you uh, one more time the actual workout that I used here. So there it is. You can see that on there. Um, that's an example. So you can see that uh, is just an example of the Hard Gainer 2.0, all biplexes. Um, and then two days on, one day off is the format, which is new, and then active recovery workouts as options, um, so that kind of thing. So uh, I think that gives you some ideas. And then uh, just a shout-out, Perry, if you can find that uh, blog post by Seth Godin, that would be great. Um, we can put that in the show notes as well about uh, – people who look for the shortcuts and the hacks. And, uh, you know, I could have jumped on board with those people a long time ago. Um, I chose not to uh, for good reason. And I wanted to say a little bit more about that. But I think uh, I think the lead in is enough and people will get people will either understand when they stumble upon this page or they won't. So if they want authenticity and an educated, researched, experienced point of view, that's, uh, you know, about leading people, then uh, then that's uh, that's a different thing. Monica's just posted the actual link to the Hard Gainer on Amazon if you want to read some reviews or look for reviews. So uh, you can do that. Or you can take the course, hardgainersolution.com. And then uh, Monica has a good comment there. Shortcuts leads, leads to long detours eventually. I like that line. So, uh, yeah, that's a very good line. We should end with that. So with that, that's the Hard Gainer Solution 2.0. So glad you were there. And uh, keep in mind, I hope you will all be here on Friday as well. It's going to be an interesting uh, podcast and uh, webinar for a lot of you. Uh, so I hope you'll attend and look for my announcement. And uh, I'll see you all later. Andy, thanks for coming. And uh, Hard Gainer Solution 2.0. Boom, shaka laka laka, boom, boom. <laughs>